As corn growers, you and I always like to be in control of the weather. But at the same time, Mother Nature can deal with some pretty harsh environments. This particular field, which was planted on April 26, started out in perfect conditions. And we were greatly relieved after two pretty tough springs. Here in 21, we said, we got this one going on. And I don't know if it's ever planted better. But then, and this is why we talk about a base plus program, we had 6.4 inches of water since April 26, and we're here just after the middle of May. And so as I think about how do we plan for the future years, how do we adjust a system, Base Plus to me always wins. For us, that means a 360 banded on the planter, and we're banding nitrogen on each side of the row to help us go through some pretty tough circumstances. Now I understand where the water's deep out here, we're still gonna denitrify and we're gonna lose nitrogen. But for us, base plus always wins. Some on with the planter in the spring, close to when it's gonna need it, and then we wait and we let nature play her hand and we see what cards are we dealt. In this case, there's out of this 75 acres, probably 20 to 30 acres, under quite a bit of water damage, I'll come in with wide drop on a side dress bar or with the deer sprayer and we'll put on another 60 units with side dress and then a third pass come back at head high corn and we'll finish the nitrogen program or to the yield race we'll put on an additional 60 more. So in this case this plan was 180 units, 80 on at the planter, 100 at shoulder high wide drop time for 180 to go to that 240 yield mark. Nature's dealt us a little bit of a tough go, so we'll probably have to add another 20 to 40 units of N, but we should be able to still respond to this and yield very well. At the same time, right now in May of 21, I have friends on the Minnesota Mason City Iowa line in the opposite scenario. And the base plus plan still by far is dollars ahead there where they are so dry. In fact, they're telling me, Greg, we have corn and dry ground planted on April 16th, and here it is May 19th, and it hasn't sprouted. It's so droughty. In this case, bandits on their planters put down the 60 to 80 units. Now they're in the driver's seat. As the season goes, they're gonna be able to come in with a post-nitrogen application right next to the stalk of wide drop at the right time, and they'll manage the amount of N for the expected yield. Remember, for you and I, the goal is 0.7 pounds of nitrogen for one bushel of grain. At this point, we're in a field here that was planted on April 27th, corn on beans, 111 day variety. And we're tasseled, and as you look at the ears, you can see that we are 100% pollinated at this stage. So we're not quite R2, between R1 and R2. And this is a base plus program. In other words, on April 27th, the planter had bandits on, and we were putting down 80 units of nitrogen and sulfur, three inches on each side of the seed. We then come back with wide drop, our normal program, because we like to be as far into the growing season as we can as nature continues to beat on us. And you saw that six inch rain in those ponds, and we know that nitrogen is moving down to the profile. We brought soil scan in and we started probing here on June 15th. And I quickly saw that that first 12 inches was below 10 parts per million. And that pulled the trigger for us and said, it's time to get on that next hundred and some units of N. We're not gonna run this ear out early in its growing season. And as you look at the base of this plant, you can see that we got quite a bit of goosenecking in here. In other words, when this corn was V10, we had 75 mile an hour winds with a two and a half inch rain and it just literally set these fields down within two feet of the ground. The exciting thing is within four days this corn stood up but I have a lot of goosenecks, six inch goosenecks in almost every field that we have. But as I looked at these lower leaves this plant is talking to me. Now I'm in here today wanting to check are we okay with a 240 bushel yield goal, in other words we got a lot of potential here. If we look at these ears, we're averaging 16 around and 42 long. And so Greg's job at this point is, as plant manager, to make sure that we don't back up on length. 
and I already told you that we pollinate it almost 40 kernels long. So can we maintain and keep that length and also keep enough kernel depth or kernel size and kernel weight by not running this plant out of end. So today it's simply taking the probe and using soil scan to say are we going to be all right? Can we make the end of the race? Will Greg have a smile on his face when the combine comes through here or are we flat going to run out? Let's take a few probes and let's see here if we can see where this field is at this existing moment. So we're probing this first layer at 12 inches deep. In this case, I'm just going six inches on each side of the plant because for Greg's system, that's where most of that nitrogen has been applied. Yes, I realize that nitrogen can move through the soil profile. I'm extremely interested in that six inch diameter around the base of that plant to say exactly where are we at. So when we go after pulling the 12 inch, we go right back down that same hole. We're gonna go down into that 24 inch depth and we're gonna pull this sample, this 12 inch core, so we can get our soil scan to give us two accurate readings. Where's the nitrogen at this stage of the corn plant's life? So the soil scan has the capability to be plugged right into the gator. So we're gonna come after making this soil extremely fine. We've taken all the large chunks and ground them up. We're gonna take two measuring cups. We're gonna put it here in the mix station and we're gonna mix this with the actual mixing solution. So we're gonna go ahead and push our iPad and as I said, it's gonna go ahead and start adding the water and gonna mix as a slurry. And I'm gonna go in here and put on sample one that this is 12 inches in depth. So we got that recorded and it's gonna go ahead and mix. So in a matter of a few minutes, it'll have that mixed into slurry and we'll come over here to our sensors. It's already being calibrated into the 20 parts per million solution and we already had it calibrated here. I've done quite a few samples here this afternoon. So we'll come and move this mixed slurry over and I'll go ahead and read it and give it for the top 12 inches. I'm looking for a number at this stage in that nine to 10 on the top, and I'm really hoping we're over five in the bottom 24. Take it off our mixing station, usually take my spoon, just mix that up just a tad more. Come right over into the sensors. Go ahead to our iPad, and we'll start to read. Process of analyzation. I then go ahead and clean the actual mixing station for the next set while we're waiting for that to analyze. The iPad says the well, soil scan has finished this particular test of our top 12 inches and I'm excited to see that we have 14 parts per million in that top 12. We'll go ahead now and mix up the bottom 24 and let's take a look. Usually when I add those two together I like to be in that 19 to 20 if possible. At the same time a 14 gives me a lot of peace of mind not surprised when I see the lower leaves and these corn plants at this stage, we're really good to go. So we put back the 20 parts per million solution. So it's recalibrating the sensors for the next sample here. I'll go in for sample two and I'll put 24 inches and done for depth. You can hear it mixing here. And as soon as that's mixed in a matter of a minute or two, we'll move over to the analysis stage. We'll go ahead and remove the sensor cup, take our spoon and give it a little bit of a stir, help it bring that sediment off the bottom. Put it in the sensor and we'll start to read. So right now the soil scan is saying this bottom 24 inches of soil is at seven parts per million. And once we're over 25%, this number very rarely changes. So it's exactly where I was hoping that I would see it. So we're at 14 and seven or 21 parts per million for the combination. And as I'm in the field, I can definitely see that that's the kind of where I was expecting to be. So as I finish out using the technology we have on soil scan, I entered a yield goal of 240. I told it we're at R1 stage, put in my organic matter at 2.5%. And it says at this stage, with the 21 parts per million for the two depths uh, combination, I'm needing zero additional in. So SoilScan's done its job. It's exactly what I wanted to see. 
it gives me a really good benchmark where we're at. Let's go back in the field and take a look at some other things that this corn is talking to us about. When we walk in a field at this R1 stage, there's a lot of things we can learn, and sometimes it's really humbling, but it's good to get in and listen to the corn. And so for me, as I come in, my eyes immediately go to the ground, and I look at spacing and singulation and how I'm looking at all the stalk diameter. Yes, some of these bottom stalks are slightly goosenecked. At the same time, I see that they emerged all within 24 hours because stalk diameter is consistent all the way down. My eyes then start to come up from the bottom of the plant and work up towards the ear and things I'm looking for is, do I see a nitrogen deficiency on those bottom leaves? Do I have ear set all on the same? So if I count down from the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I always want that ear to be on the seventh node from the top. That's where you'll have the highest yields. So I look at all the plants and I say, are all my ears the same height? All that's telling us is our corn planter and our farming system is in sync. Corn always tells us the truth, and so it's things that we look for. Other things that I'm looking for as I come in, and this particular hybrid has been an extremely high yielding hybrid for us. Pioneer 1197, 111 day corn, and it's one that I really have fallen in love with. At the same time, you don't want to have disease take it. No mystery to me that we would start to see some gray leaf in here when you consider the growing season that we've had. Yes, the sun's shining right now, and, but tomorrow, an inch of rain. The next day, another inch of rain. So in the next 24 hours, we're predicted over 2.2 inches of water that just came on two days ago, another two inches. So we're just stacking them up. So it's a perfect environment we have for gray leaf. In this case, as I look at this plant, I see two small lesions starting, and it's the leaf below the ear leaf. Remember, the ear leaf is a sacred one. That's one that you and I do not want to lose. And as I look at the ear leaf here on this particular plant, as I look at it, it's totally clean yet. I really like that. And as we go up through the plant, of course, we know that rust starts from the top, blows in all the way from Texas. We got rust that comes in from the top. We got gray leaf that's coming up from the bottom. And so we will definitely be doing, in the budget, is a full application of fungicide for us. So in our case, you know, we'll come in here at DeLauro and we'll, um, we'll put this to work here on the bear product. And so I like what I see at this stage. Another thing that we can do is you, if you have your knife with you, you can come in and split this plant. So what am I looking for? Each of these nodes give us a really clear indication how are we doing on fertilization. In other words, as this plant is growing each day in the sunshine with respiration, this plant's pulling up nutrients and water through the root system. And it's packing fertilizer in each one of these nodes. Then as this ear starts to form, and this is a critical stage, we already are pollinated, so now we're starting to have kernels almost go into what? Blister, and it's starting to form. And so it's starting to draw down in this plant. And so it starts at the top, and it starts to draw off of each of the reserves off of each node. When we see a soil scan combination reading of 12 inches and 24, reading 21, I'm not surprised that we see one, two, three, four, a little bit in five. By the time we get to six, yes, we have cotton pithing, but seven and eight definitely show those nodes that we have. These warehouses and store houses are totally empty. All in all, exactly what I hope to see in an R1, R2 corn plant. Let me grab a plant here from a neighboring field. In this case, this grower is a once and done. Came in right at planting time, right before planting. This plant's a little bit behind the corn that we're in. It's just starting to silk. The tassel itself has not shed any pollen yet. But as we look at the lower leaves, they're talking to us. As I look at these lower leaves, and you see it, I pulled them off the plant here, you can see it's starting to say at this stage, a lot of nitrogen deficiency. And you can see it here. So being a one-time applied in, when I open this plant, I'm not going to be surprised if we see cotton pithing pretty far down. So I look down here at the bottom, on the first node is still pretty clean. Let me get just a little bit deeper there. 
Actually, it's showing cotton pithing all the way down the bottom of the root, this plant that I brought out of the neighboring field. You can see the second node has got a considerable amount. The third is totally depleted. And all the styrofoam you see in here, just you and I, uh, just seeing that this plant's saying it's going to run out. And at this stage, it makes me nervous because this here is just actually getting a really good start. When I grab this particular plant out of that field that's a once and done, in other words, all the nitrogen went out of a floater with weed and feed, I went ahead and took the, the energy to pull a few soil samples at 12 inches to run through soil scans. So I took a soil probe, numerous soil probes at 12 inches and then again at 24. Soil scan says the combination is five. In other words, the top 12 had three parts per million, the bottom 24 inches only had two parts per million, and when I cut this plant open, that's exactly what I'm seeing at this stage. Soil scan and our pocket knife are showing the same results. After that six inch rain event and I was standing in front of that pond and we saw the kind of water damage that we had in that field, I would have never guessed that even with the extreme rainfall we've had through the growing season, that we'd be looking at a crop of this kind of potential today. So for me, the base plus works whether we're extremely wet or like our good friends in the Dakotas and Minnesota where it's extremely dry. It gives us the ability to keep our hand on the control levers and give us the opportunity to have a really successful, profitable year.